Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Watching a Gun Law TV. I am Watching a Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as we know, the ATF is really turning up the heat on those who purchased rare breed forced reset triggers. Now, initially, we thought that all the heat was going to come down on the FFL industry, but now that the ATF appears to be done with them, they're going to you, the lawful and responsible gun owner. There are many stories kicking around out here in the YouTubeverse about people receiving nasty little visits from the ATF for no purpose other than at one point they lawfully purchased a legal trigger. So we need to have a really important discussion because I know a lot of you may have purchased these things. None of you did anything illegal when you did, but you're beginning to worry about what's going to happen if you get an unwanted knock on the door. So today we're going to have a really important discussion. So let's spend a few minutes talking about what are you going to do when the ATF shows up for your trigger? Okay, so the issue we're talking about is, once again, the Rare Breed Forced Reset Trigger. Now, we have done a series of videos on this because this seems to be a never-ending story. And unfortunately, every time we turn the page to a new chapter, this story appears to be getting worse. As we know, uh, a wonderful piece of technology created by the company Rare Breed, a forced reset trigger, which many of you nationwide went out and lawfully purchased. There was nothing unlawful about the purchase. There was nothing unlawful about the possession or use of those triggers. Fast forward a couple of years later, now the ATF in their one of their creative interpretation games decides, you know what? We're going to classify the rare breed trigger in and of itself as a machine gun and therefore make it illegal contraband. Now, that began a bunch of communications between the ATF and the FFL industry in which there was this open letter to FFLs nationwide where they basically began to warn that they were going to take remedial actions against those who were selling these triggers and those who were purchasing these triggers. Now that got a lot of FFL spooked and a lot of them pulled them off the shelves and there were some attorney generals around the country talking pretty tough and so that got the rare breed company to pull back selling them to certain states, Washington included in that. But many of you around the country actually get to live free like Americans and so there was no restriction whatsoever between the commerce of purchasing and selling these particular triggers in your home state. Well, as we know from this video right here, there was a Massachusetts man who recently received a very unpleasant visit from the ATF, and they did end up arresting him, seizing a ton of property, and charging him with multiple counts of possession of unlawful firearms, including automatic weapons. Amongst the inventory of items that they uh, stated to have received that was in furtherance or evidence of that crime was three forced reset triggers. Now, Fast forward a couple of weeks later, our good friends at Ammoland.com are telling another story of an individual who received a very unpleasant visit from the ATF. And this is a person who actually only purchased one rare breed trigger. So unlike the other gentleman in Massachusetts, who candidly was up to all sorts of things, including having a bunch of Glock switches and things like that. The, the gentleman that was referenced in this story purchased one rare breed trigger. Now, on the story from Ammo Land, there was a social media post from a gentleman named Paul Finch. I do not know where Paul Finch is located. I candidly do not know if Paul Finch is a real individual. I'm assuming he is. But there was an attachment to the post, which was a letter that was purportedly left at his residence by the ATF. Now, this is what the post itself said. Just a heads up, I got a visit from the AFT for a trigger I bought from Gunbroker and one from Rare Breed directly. Hide your dogs, ladies and gentlemen. They're coming a knocking. And then he added a little edit, and I do want you all to pay attention to this as well. Edit. I don't want to say much more on here because they do, in fact, watch this group and who posts what information. So take what you will of it. They're out there all, with all the information you use to buy them and enough to prosecute you of they want to push it. I'm assuming he meant if they want to push it. And then he concludes by saying, yeah, it sucks, but that's the reality of it right now. Well, I agree with Mr. Finch that that does, in fact, suck. But there was an attachment to this post, which was a picture of a letter purportedly left 
by the ATF for Mr. Finch. Now, I want you to pay careful attention to the wording of this letter, this letter right here, um, because it really is alarming at how much information the ATF is privy to when they're coming out to visit particular individuals. Warning notice, you may be in violation of federal law. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives is responsible for enforcing federal firearms law. The ATF has information that you acquired one or more forced hard reset trigger FRT devices from gunbroker.account Rifle Remedy 2000. These items have been classified as machine guns that were unlawfully manufactured. Possession of these devices is a violation of law due to their illegal manufacture. As such, due to their illegal manufacture, the registration of these devices in the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Record, NFRTR, is also a violation of law. So I want you to pay careful attention here to a couple things. Number one, they know exactly what he purchased, where he purchased it, and from whose account, who the seller of it was. Number two, they are clearly placing the blame at this point on the manufacturer. And what they're saying is, is, hey, because they were unlawfully manufactured, your possession was unlawful. And even if you turn around and try to get a Form 1 or Form 4 and get an ATF blessings on this, because they were unlawfully manufactured, the ATF is not going to approve a tax stamp to authorize the possession of these items. Now, the letter further goes on to state, this letter officially notifies you that the unlawful receipt and possession of any of these devices is a felony violation of federal law and devices that are unlawfully received or possessed are subject to seizure and forfeiture by the federal government. Continued possession of any of these devices could result in prosecution for criminal violations of federal law as well as potential state criminal violations. Any future purchase or possession of such devices may subject you to prosecution as well. Okay, so again, you know, as a lawyer, we kind of parse words out, but take a look at what they're saying here. They're saying that continued possession will constitute a crime and any further attempt to acquire and possess new triggers will also constitute a crime. Are they leaving an out here for people to get rid of these triggers and avoid criminal liability? I believe they are. Now, this is where we're going to kind of dissect here, because I recognize that some of you are going to be screaming that this is tyranny, this is total BS, and I'm not going to give them anything. And I understand where you're coming from. My job here is to educate you as to what the law is, how is the law currently being enforced, so that, and then how to best operate within the confines of it. It is your job to take the information I give you and to decide what you want to do with it, understanding that if you choose not to follow the rules of law, what the consequences of those choices will be. Well, the title of this video is, what are you going to do when the ATF shows up for your trigger? And in this video right here, we did give you some advice. Now, to recap what we believe, and again, this is our legal opinion. You could take this for what it is worth. You can choose to follow it or not. What we believe is the best thing to do if you have purchased one of these triggers is to, if the trigger is in a firearm, to remove it from that firearm, to document its removal. If you do not have it in a firearm, to document your that you have it. And then, and this is most important, to document its destruction. Destroy the trigger. Smash it. Do whatever you need to do to it. Destroy that trigger. Carefully photo document the destruction of that trigger. Now, should you hang on to all of that? No. This is why I don't. And this is why I want to offer to any of you an opportunity to work with Washington Gun Law. And certainly there are local counsel in your local jurisdictions that can do this for you as well. Once the photo documentation has been completed of the destruction of the trigger, that photo documentation should be stored off of your phone. Why? Because if the ATF gets real serious about things, if they don't believe you, if they decide to really open up a criminal investigation and start issuing search warrants, yes, your cell phone could be subject to a search warrant. That digital information of the destruction of the trigger should be sh stored securely off the phone, but in a place that can be disseminated readily. If if in fact the ATF does show up at your door, this is the opportunity for 
that information to be disseminated to the ATF so that they know that this individual was aware of the problem. They have since destroyed the contraband. Should you be doing that yourself? That's the $64,000 question. And my advice is, no, you should not. You should not have contact and communications with the very law enforcement agency who has openly stated in a letter, and they're there for this purpose, that they believe that you have committed a crime. No, this is the purpose of why you have attorneys. If you are interested in working with Washington Gun Law on this, feel free to call us at the office. We do have a program in place where we will digitally store all of your evidence. We will send you some business cards as well as an instruction letter so that if the ATF does show up at your door, you can hand them this written communication that will instruct the ATF to contact Washington Gun Law immediately. We will be able to provide them with the information related to the destruction of your triggers and your triggers alone. It will avoid the need for you to have communication with the ATF and we can then ensure that the matter as it relates to you is closed. Listen, you are likely going to have a lot more questions about this issue, and this is likely not the last video that we are going to do on the force reset trigger issue. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, remember you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425 765 Now, let's remember. Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.